Hey everybody, my name is Gabriel Bowman and today we're joined with the one, the only, Joe Almaleki. We were friends since like first grade. Long and time. We've, we've kind of been on the same path. We've been through the same hard things. We've been through some of the same addictions, I, I can assume, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and we've experienced some very hard things together, right? And, and in a lot of ways, you know, that, that really has brought us really close together. And that's why it's just a pleasure to have him here today to talk a little bit about self-progression, how to get into it, how to pursue it, and how to overcome addictions, how to overcome. I mean, there's, we talk about everything. Stick around for the full video. I know it's long. Don't be a baby. This is gonna change everything about your life and the way you think about self-progression. Anyways, let's get right into it. <laughs> That's so goofy, bro. <laughs> Dude, let's, let's talk a little bit about self-progression and more so like how to get into it, if that makes sense. And so uh, Joseph, like, tell me, how did you get into self-progression? If you don't mind me asking. So for me, I think self-progression was really just about trying to prove to myself that I could do it. You know, uh, for the longest time, you know, I'm pretty sure most people can kind of relate to this, but you know, you have family members that could say, you really don't do nothing. You're gonna sit at home and play video games, watch TV all day, do nothing with your life. You know, that's something I kind of had growing up. So I was like, you know, I'm none of those things. You know, I wanted to really prove to not only my parents, but to myself and also to God that I would be able to, you know, master myself, get towards a better, like bigger goals in life and just keep striving for more because that's what we're built for, right? Yeah. We're built to be strong. 100%. Yeah, that's, that's big. I, and I feel like uh, the same thing, I think it's the same thing for everybody. Everybody kind of falls into self-progression whether they like it or not, simply because they don't feel like they're doing enough or they feel like there's something more that God has provided for them. Um, whether you're religious or not, you know, there's something more that you feel like you need to do. This is kind of a weird uh, setting for, for us to be filming because it's not like the typical video I would post or, or, um, or film for that matter. We aren't, we, we're, but essentially the whole point is that we're trying to switch things up. And in order to really progress and change in your life, you have to make changes. So something like this is extremely uncomfortable um, and I think that's kind of what we want to talk a little bit about is like, like this, the side of like, not only just starting it up, but how to overcome the discomfort of self-progression. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a, it's a weird thing, but totally. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. I think being able to overcome it, just kind of to be afraid of minuscule things, I feel is kind of childish. You know what I mean? We all grow up and yeah, we all have rational fears, but at the same time, how are we going to grow from our weaknesses? You know? If we keep letting the weaknesses run us, then how are we gonna get strength, you know? So filming in uh, uncomfortable places, I think is the best thing to kind of help grow yourself and kind of help get out of your shell because for me personally, and Gabe can kind of corroborate this, but I used to be a very shy person. You know, I know Corroborate, very, is, that, is that a real word? <laughs> it, is, it is a real word, bro. Okay. Corroborate. I mean, when I was a kid, I would always be really shy, timid, because you know, I just was that way. But, you know, I've known this guy for so long that he's helped me break out of my shell and kind of find myself. And, you know, being put into so many uncomfortable scenarios with, you know, the lives we've lived in in high school. I think it's kind of like the one thing that we <laughs> yeah. can kind of relate on, you know? Yeah. No, 100%. That's the thing is like, I, I, another part is um, we have had to change a lot. Like, it's not that we necessarily wanted to change all the time. It's like... It's the sensation that it's like, as a man in today's society, if you don't change, your life's pretty much over. Like, if you don't make the, the simple shifts in your, in your daily motions and activities, like, you never change, you, you continue to be lazy, you never become anything better. And that hurts probably more than anything in, like, in the self-progression world, mm -hmm. um, or self-improvement, whatever people call it right now. When you're getting into self-progression, um, there is somewhat of a phase where you're like on a high. I don't know if you felt this, like you were on a high in self-progression. Like you feel like you are achieving everything. You feel like you're succeeding at every single point in life. And then suddenly like you come to a crash. I don't know. Have you experienced that at yeah. all? Yeah. hundred percent. I feel like it, it, it happens in every person's life all the time. I mean, sometimes for me, it happens after the weekend, 
you know, I might have you having fun, might be, you know, chilling, oh. uh, get off a diet or whatever, you know, and then I feel like, man, I can't go back to the gym. I have no desire to do any of this stuff. But I think for me, because, you know, we are adults, we are right. young adults. And so to be able to say, hey, you know, people 100 years ago were doing so much more than we are today. Yeah. So it kind of gives me motivation to kind of go out and say, you know what, screw it. I might hate it, but the feeling afterwards is like a euphoria. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 100%. And that's the thing is like feeling that feeling of like, I don't know. When you do fall into that, that low point, when you do fall into that failure phase, if you might call it that, suddenly it's like just by pushing through, not only have you accomplished something that is hard, but you are now like two times better than you were. It's like that, that instant decision just to do it anyways, or you know wh whether you fell off the diet or whatever, you know, things like that, it changes everything. Like the whole game just flips completely. Totally. There is a scripture you could probably kind of go off of that I was thinking about. Okay. It's in Samuel. Samuel? Yep. I'll just read it. Okay. Okay. 1 Samuel 2, 7 through 9. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth, lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill. He set them among princes and make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he hath set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness for the strength shall no man prevail. I think that kind of speaks volume for me because, you know, not only does the Lord want the very best for us, but we owe it to him. He has given us so much, you know, as the creator of all of us. He's also helped us, you know, see so many different things. I mean, for now, I think for right now in our time, we live in such an interesting time where people can be so lazy and there's like no repercussion for it. They want you to be lazy, you know? Yeah. I think we just are dead set on every person being like, it's okay. That's like the number one thing. It's okay. Yeah. I accept you for this, this, and that. I will tolerate you being lazy. Yeah, you're, it's you're like, good the way you are. You're right? good the way you are. But Jesus never, you know, tolerated any of this. I mean, there, neither did he teach it either. Exactly. Yeah. None of the teachings, even like before then, you know. To the end of his life. To the end of this life, it's like, uh, it's an interesting thing because if you are lazy, it just, you'll never accomplish anything in life. And not only will that happen, but you're also bringing a little bit of shame to your own family name. You know what I mean? Because in that sense, you are letting your bloodline die out without any remarkable things going on. Yeah. And I think for me, it's like, you gotta really take your last name as probably the one thing that's most important in your life because you stem from it from your parents, right? So both your parents are, you should be known for both your parents being like, your parents raised you well, right? Yeah. They raised you well enough to know right from wrong, they teach you stuff from the Bible, right? Or even the Quran, if you read that stuff, you know, because they're both linked in a way where it's all talking about if you don't accomplish anything within your life, what is the purpose of your life? You know? Yeah, 100%. And so now we're getting to a point where people are so lazy, they're like, ah, oh, it's okay to be lazy because, you know, we're, we're in such a time where everything is so comfortable and I could do this, this, and that. It's like, no, it's not. Mm. You really shouldn't. There's no real change in life. The only thing is that things are more convenient to control us. You know, yeah. and so we need to be wary and heed the storm that comes with all this like, oh, exactly, sin and just uh, apathy for everything. You know, I don't care about this. I don't care about that. It doesn't matter. Yeah. The only way you should be apathetic is in the face of evil. You know, yeah. in the face of everything that's going wrong in the world, you should be able to say, you know, I could still make it. Which is why in this verse in First Samuel two through seven through seven through nine, it says explicitly <laughs> that. Um, it says explicitly that because we, if we take upon our own lives, we will not be poor. We will not be any of these things in terms of our hearts and our souls, right? Yeah. So it teaches us to take into account that we are the controllers of our own lives. Yeah, and we can become rich in knowledge, in spirit, and in physicality, right? So it's whether if you want to be knowledgeable in a trade skill, you want to be knowledgeable in making money, you want to be knowledgeable in doing anything that has to do with making money physical, in a physical sense, or be you know, physically active by going to the gym every single day and saying, you know what, I'm not going to let the laziness take away from my experiences, right? Or even through uh, mentality-wise, and same thing with, you know, uh, with your soul. 
Yeah. Right. There's so many different things that play here that you could just really learn from. Yeah, no, and I, I agree. Like, I think you brought up a couple of different really awesome points. And like, one of those things is like how even in the scripture, right? When, when it says that Christ lifts us up from the dust, like that's a thought that's, I don't know. I don't think we really consider that too often. Yeah, we do in some senses, right? With the, the atonement, with repentance, with really any situation um, as a Christian or as, you know, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but he really does. But what it takes is faith. Like if you want that fortune that you're talking about, if you want to, um, I don't know, if you want to become more fit or muscular, right? You're trying to build something up. You're trying to overcome addiction or build the mental fortitude to push through it. It first takes faith, right? And if you don't have faith, then, you know, Christ has no, I don't know, he has power, but he's not going to lift you up out of the dust. He's not going to ever do anything for you. It takes a, a leap of faith. And so... Which is why you, you hear about when um, in the wilderness after Moses took um, all the people, they, they crossed the Red Sea, um, he freed them from bondage. Um, while they're in the, the wilderness, they had the Ark of the Covenant, right? Which they were promised that if they had this Ark and they did not let it touch the ground, they did not, um, they did not do any of those things, they would, you know, they would make it through the land okay. And not only that, they were promised that if they, if they traveled across the wilderness with that, that Ark of the Covenant the whole entire time, that they would never touch, you know, they would, they would stay on dry ground, uh, on dry ground essentially for the whole time. Mm-hmm. And what happened was like, you know, we all hear about this river that they come to. And they're like, well, what do we do? Like, what are we supposed to do? There's a river right here. We were promised that we were going to cross on dry ground all the way through. And like, I think we, we come to that point in our life, like, what are we supposed to do? We're at a crossroad. What on earth are we even supposed to do? But on the other hand, what they did, I think this is you know, what, what's most re- remarkable. They took the first step. And then as they took that first step, you see the water start to part, right? It's that act of faith not really knowing what was going to happen. They could have taken like two steps or maybe, right? And the ark could have just barely been a foot above the water, right? It doesn't matter, right? It was just the one step that, that, that God required for them to truly cross on dry ground. And I mean, that's what, that's what he requires of us. If we want to be lifted out of the dust, like what else are we supposed to do? Right? Yeah. Are we supposed to just sit there and expect something good to happen? Not no. only that, it's like the belief instead of, you know, yeah. people can have faith and say, oh, yo, I, it could maybe happen. Yeah. Right. And it's always like you want to take the road of the positive rather than the negative. Right. Yeah. And so to say this thing will happen more times than not, it could be a placebo effect. You know, yeah, 100%. it could always be like, yo, it'll actually happen. Yeah. For example, you know, I could say, oh, I have no faith in myself to be able to go to work the next day. I won't get enough sleep. I won't be able to do everything I can. But it's like, you know what? You think that but the action says otherwise, right? You could say, I could do it, right? What's the outcome gonna be like? If you say, oh, I can't do it, you're gonna be super apathetic about it, you're gonna be like, oh, woe is me, I don't, I I, I can't do this. It's like, if you're gonna really say that about yourself, of course the thing is gonna be negative. Like, any situation could be negative in that situation. 100%. And so, if you take the positive high ground about it, like, you could think about it as high ground, low ground, like, Star Wars, maybe, right? You want to make that connection, I yeah. guess. You could be like, oh, <laughs> low ground, be like, oh, I don't know if I can do this, 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 and that. It's not even Star Wars, if I'm being honest, but. I mean, I mean it works, right? It works, it works you know, as, as a metaphor, you know, you have the low ground. You won't be able to do it because you don't think so highly about being able to go through life. You know, you're apathetic about everything, right? Apathy will always get the tr- control of the weak minded. Yeah. When you have the high, the high ground, right? You're, pro- you're positive. I know what's going to happen in life. I could take an educated guess and say, if I am able to do this thing, so and so, like, hey, I'm going to go to work tomorrow, get everything done as best I can, best that I can do, not can, it's do, right? Yeah. You will always be able to maintain and, you know, accomplish your goals no matter what. Um, so you could go to work, you know, with a great mindset, be like super happy and be like, hey, you know, run through the storm. And then, you know, you get your, you set a schedule for yourself almost be like, okay, I have enough time to do A, B, C. More times than, more times than not, you always get them accomplished if you set that scheduling up for yourself. Oh, 100%. And it's like, 
it's that belief that you can do it. You know, having the mindset like, oh, I don't think I could do it. When you have that mindset and that time comes where you could have been doing it, it will just be wasted time. Yeah. And then you'll be sitting there like, man, I should have gone to the gym. Or man, I should have, I should have been setting up on my courses for school, or I should have been doing this, this, and that. Yeah, I could 100%. be making money right now, right? Yeah. So if you devote everything. yourself to so many different trades, if you just say, hey, I will take maybe 10 minutes out of my day to go to the gym, lift for maybe, or maybe not even 10 minutes, like maybe 30 minutes. If you don't have an hour, you can have 30 minutes to be like, okay, if I consistently go every single day for 30 minutes, lift as much as I can, be done with it, and then go, to, go on to the next subject, you have so much, you, have, you feel more accomplished, and by the end of the day, you'll be tired, but it's better to be worn out and accomplished than full of energy and not accomplishing anything. Because yeah. that breeds laziness, and that breeds uh, apathy. Yeah, and, and sin, even, and you sin. know? like. Like imagine you're having all this energy. Form. Yeah, you're you are bound to fall into the depths of sin. It's like that's another thing is a lot of people do struggle with things like addiction. They struggle with, I mean, pornography is a huge issue with men in this oh, yeah. day and age. It's like the the honest the big honestly the biggest solution is just get busy, start doing things. Like if you have the more you have in your in your in your day to do, the less you think about those those negative things, those sins, those different things like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, how can you not succeed if you are focused on the goal at hand? But on the other hand, I also want to point out that like when you're starting a business, when you're, when you want something really badly, when it's like for me, like my YouTube channel, in a lot of ways, you almost have to cancel everything out and go into like tunnel vision. Oh yeah. Like at least for a couple months, right? So that you can get acclimated. Um, and then just by doing that alone, the leverage that you were offered is like, it's insane. Like it gives you, it literally gives you the high ground as, as we could say, right? Yep. Um, so I think that's, yeah, that's a super cool thing. Yeah. I think kind of stepping away from that too, in continuation to what we just talked about, let's talk a little bit about like overcoming distractions because I think that's one of the biggest things. Like we can have all these goals set in, in place. We could have all these dreams and, and visions in our, in our mind. But like the issue is, the issue at hand is really the distractions. Yep. And like this is a society that literally, it, it's kind of funny, but this whole entire world today, it's all about instant gratification. It's all about, um, let me get your attention. Like scroll through your shorts for like, for just for like a few seconds. You'll see that those seconds are like, they suddenly those on. seconds, they turn to minutes, they turn to hours. Heck, it will eat your whole entire day up. Mm -hmm. And all of it is just like, hey, let me get your attention. Let me grab your attention. Let me throw in these weird sounds and, and weird pop-ups. I know because I've had a look at that when I make my own shorts. It's like everything is competing for your, your attention. But at the same time, it's like there's one task at hand that we need to work on. Mm -hmm. It's like I need to make a video, right? I need to, I need to write this certain thing. I need to do this thing right now. Otherwise, I'm just going to waste the rest of my day. It's like, I guess part of that would be one solution would be planning, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you have anything to add to that, but yeah, like to make a schedule and everything. I mean, yeah, it's super important to make a schedule for yourself first off, first and foremost. But not only that, what are you going to fill within yeah. that day? You were telling me the other day when you used to be on your mission, right? You yeah. were telling me that every single day you would have a board with goals as well as what you were gonna do that specific day. 100%. I mean, yeah, it's goals, but also like, how much can you fill in one day realistically, right? And yeah. that might see, seem daunting, but to be able to come up with something that you could do, always will help. Whether it's going to the gym, going to work, getting a meal prep plan in, self for, in order for yourself, or even just like um, going online, finding ways to make money even, you know? Yeah. There's a lot of ways, you, there's a lot of ways you could spend your time no matter what. And for me, you know, I'm a musician as well. Uh, this is a constant thing in musicianship, is where you're always, you're gonna sit down like, okay, I'm gonna open up this etude book, or I'm gonna like go and sight read some stuff, try to practice on my technique, my skills, and try to really refine my craft, right? Yeah. And that could be for any trade, that could be for art, that could be for podcasting, that could be for making videos, that could be for producing music, whatever, right? You could always find something to approve upon yourself. There's always something to improve, improve on in your life. We don't know everything. And so yeah. musician wise, you know, this is a huge, like, this is like a big kind of like joke in the industry where it's like you sit down, you're like, okay, I'm going to take two hours today. We're going to learn how to 
side read, we're gonna learn a bunch of different keys. We're gonna learn how to play licks in different keys, right? As a musician, you know, jazz musicians usually do that. But most times, especially kids our age, people our age, and especially millennials now too, oh, yeah, they're always gonna be like, okay, practice, practice, practice. Oh, man, I'm tired. Let me look on my Instagram feed. That's what gets you. Yeah. That is, is gonna, that's what's gonna distract, distract you from everything, you know? It's like you start scrolling and then five minutes goes by and you're like, oh crap. Oh yeah. I, I, I'm not able to do this thing now because um, I spent way too much time. And I think the best way to combat that is shut off your phone and just try and develop your mental fortitude. Yeah, 100%. you know what I mean. Make things be like okay. If I take a break for a second, it's only to breathe, and think about it, regroup, and then we'll try it again. That's usually 100%. what happens whenever you fail in something. It's like, don't give up immediately. If you give up, you're never going to succeed in life. However, if you're going to succeed, you're going to have to build up that mental fortitude, but also be like, okay, let me come at this from a different angle, see what I can do, and just figure it out. And then from there, you're yeah, good. it works. And just to add on to that, like kind of going back to my mission, bro, like when we were on the mission, like every, not only was our whole day planned out, but every single hour block was planned out. Like the whole goal is the second we woke up at 6.30 every single morning, like it was start planning your day out. Every block had to be planned, your meals, um, the activities you're going to do, the different types of productivity that you were going to participate in, such as like we're going to go out on the street and go talk to people or we're going to go and knock on doors or we're going to do this, we're going to do that, right? Or we have to prepare or plan for um, said lesson, right? Um, so we'd have like companionship study, right? Me and my partner at the time, right? So different things like that. Every single thing was planned out down to the very T. But also on the other side of things, another part was planning out what we were going to do in case we did feel temptation or in case we did forget our purpose, right? If we're, the second we're like on our phone scrolling, no, we had a lot of restrictions. But I mean, it doesn't mean that you can't find distractions on your phone. Mm -hmm. So like in our handbook it said, um, if you ever see yourself like losing your purpose, scrolling or wasting your time, it says to put down your phone and rethink what you were supposed to do. Like, and, and then initially like getting on your phone in the first place, you had to think before you even turned on your phone, is what I'm like, I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to take 15 minutes to look on Facebook um, and post a inspiring um, quote or video, something like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, 100%, planning is key. If, I mean, there's that quote, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail, right? Yeah. 100%. Yep. Yeah. it's like, uh, I saw this video of this guy, right? Now, I'm gonna bring a story into this a little bit. Yeah. There's this video of this guy, right? Of course, I was scrolling on Instagram trying to find some different things, you know, I go yeah. on David Goggins stuff, right, a lot. All right, I go on a binge of David Goggins for my own personal motivation because, you know, I, high, I view him in very high regard. And most people do, obviously. But there's this one video of this guy. He's just going, you know, absolutely crazy on the machines. He just puts every single weight on there. Oh and I'm not gosh. trying to diss the guy. This is yeah. just an example I'm using. You know, I send this to my friend. You know, he's just not even training properly. He's just, you know, doing little tiny reps rather yeah. than the full max rep or whatever right and I send these to the full extension yeah, yeah full extension yeah, of it and so I send it to my friends and it's like instead of train till failure it's failure to train yeah right and so no, 100% I feel like a lot of people are doing that it's like it, it, it can go for anything you know there's gonna be people that are very close-minded it's like well train for what oh yeah like what do I need to train for there's nothing that's gonna happen and there's that apathy again right and so it's like you train for anything. As a man, you should be training for any possible scenario ever. Not only will it strengthen your mind, it also strengthen your body. And when you become a father of some beautiful children with a beautiful family, no matter what, it will be beautiful because you can go on back on those experiences and teach them to your kids or whoever. You know, if you're yeah. gonna be a football coach, basketball coach, you a boxing coach, or you're gonna be like a musician, like a teacher, any type of thing. You could always hark back on that life experience and be like, hey, I can teach people this so they won't be so lost, right? Yeah. And so, and that's what's going on in our generation now is people are so lost because of how apathetic everybody is, right? So, you know, we don't have the experiences that some others may have. And sometimes it could be super like out there. Yeah. Hold on. Let's wait for him to pass. I know, loud. Loud. But 
you know, when those things happen, we can hark back on saying, hey, you know, I've had those experiences. Let me help you out with it. And it's always good to have help, you know, have a, sorry. It's always good to have about help. about the burp? Yeah, no, that's like... what it was. I'm about to, I'm about to throw up. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> right on the books, bro. No, real. Uh, what's it called? Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So it's like, uh, I just, I lost my point. But no, seriously, I mean, it's like hearkening back on that point where it's like, will you train yourself or will you not train yourself? You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, which one are you going to take? The high or low ground? Yeah, and I might add that like, you brought up how this guy's only, he's at the gym. He set aside that time. He went to the gym. He got the first part right, right? And he's loading on weight, right? He's trying to make things harder for himself, which is good. That is perfect. But then all of a sudden he's, he's doing everything halfway. Yeah. And then like, at the end of the day, I think a lot of us fall into that trap too. It's like, we it's give very, the temptation yeah. of not doing anything to the fullest extent. It's like the mundane tasks, like doing the same thing over and over again. Yep. It's like, uh, there was another quote, you know, like, reparation, or... <laughs> no, take, uh, oh, uh, repetition, yeah. Walter. Sorry. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly, yeah. No, but it was a... Uh, uh, repetition is the death of inspiration. Mm -hmm. So it's like, when you are doing the same thing every day, when you are doing things halfway, then it's like, suddenly you aren't activating your mind, you aren't opening your mind enough for the Lord to communicate, like, what you need to be doing, like, what the tasks should be that's going to bring you the most fortune and success. Um, yeah, it's just crazy. It's crazy to think about. Um, I think the last thing we want to just talk about before we close everything off, we'll keep this just brief, is um, in continuation to growing um, and, and, and starting self-progression, and then also we talked a little bit about continuing self-progression, how to continue, how to avoid distractions, things like that. The final thing is, I feel like it's just enduring, right? And during the end, which we've kind of talked on, right? But what what are some keys that you found um, to help you to stay on the course, like not to quit or anything like that? That's a good question. I mean, you know, a lot of people naturally our age are going to have that question as well because you know, repetition and consistency. Even though they're very opposite, they work hand in hand, right? Yeah. So, you know, consistency. If you're staying in the gym, staying active, you know, doing your business as usual, aside from the gym as well, you know, like going to work, making money, doing what you need to do, right? It's very repetitive and it's hard to do every single day because you're like, yeah. man, I want to go home. I want to go sleep. I, I'm so tired every single day. I hate the fact that I'm tired. And that's perfectly normal. People have very busy lives, you know, even the richest people have very uh, oh yeah, 100%. but to have the inspiration is to look back on. For me, it's to look back, right? Yeah, we learn from our mistakes, right? And you know, there's always going to be that lifelong lesson of like, don't look on the past because it could be negative for you. I actually detest that because looking back on the past for you will always help you to go above and beyond because you can look back on those experiences, right? We have yeah, like those Don't dwell in it, don't live don't in it. Don't dwell right? in it. However, yeah. look back on it and 100%. make it a strength, right? Look back on your weaknesses and make it a strength, right? And, uh, you know, for me, I had very unfortunate circumstances with my parents, with my, with my mother in particular, where she had serious health problems. I won't get into it, but she had very serious health problems, as he knows, because we've lived through it. And so for me, since we passed by, by that point, for me, it's like I can look back on that and be like, whoa, you know, my mom almost, you know, she basically almost died, right? Yeah. And so for me, it's like because she's still living today, I owe it to her. Of course, I owe it to her to be like, Man, I need to I need to shape up because she's done so much for me for my life. She's taken constant beratement from me because you know, as everybody was, I'm yeah. a rebellious kid, and I would always you know be a handful to deal with. And so I owe it to her to be able to you know make it through. Whether you're religious or not, it's up to God. But if you're not religious, you can at least look back on your family. And even if you don't have good family members to look back on, you can always look back on negative experiences, right? So it's like. Maybe you have an abusive house, household, and I know it's a sensitive subject for some people, but say you come from like an abusive household, right? And then you finally get away from it, you find peace, and it's like, you have to almost look back on that and be like, I don't ever want to be that picture. You know, I don't want to be yeah. that picture for my own life, for my road going ahead. I am going to divert from that path and do my very best to be 
way better than what that experience was. Oh, so yeah, when 100%. I have kids, when I have people of my own I could mentor or whatever, right? You could always be like, man, I have that experience. I hated it. It was terrible. It makes me sick every time I think about it. However, it's a great motivator to help you go and be like, man, I really got to make this work so I don't ever become like that. And another, one more example before, you know, we would get too long, but for me, it's looking back a hundred years ago, right? A hundred years ago, people are in their 20s getting married, having a house, having kids, before they even turn 30. And, you know, people are going to make the argument where, where it's like, oh, people would die way faster way back then. Yeah. No, they weren't. I mean, yeah, maybe because some of the hard, intensive labor, or labor intensive jobs would call for that. Right? Or sicknesses, things like that. Yeah, sicknesses or, you know, dying in some freak accident because it was an industrial revolu industrial revolution at that time. Yeah. Right. And so looking back on that for me, it's like the people that didn't die or, you know, going from war or working in a factory or any of these things, it makes me inspirational because it's like they they brunted the force, right? Yeah. They uh, they halted the force of being like, man, I can't do this every single day. They just went and did it. And that's one thing anybody could take from that. It's just saying, screw it. You know, I don't care. I'm going to do it regardless because I need to do this. You might not want to, but it's something you're going to have to go through. Yeah. Right. 100%. As a man or even as a woman, it doesn't, it's not general. It's not a gender specific thing. It's for everybody. You could say, you know, as a man, oh, I really don't want to go do this certain thing. I don't want to go get a prostate exam. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. something really goofy, right? Be like, oh, I can't, you know, but I'm going to have to. Or even as a woman, like, I don't know if I really want to have children, but I think no. it's my duty to be able to have a, ch a child with the man I love, right? And so it's very important to say, even if you're not ready, or even if you're not ready, you should do it no matter what. Yeah. Because in life, you will never be ready for anything. Life throws so many curveballs at you to where you're like, I don't even know if I can make it. 100%. So you should just do it anyways. There's always that one little voice in your head, right? That's the temptation saying, oh, I can't do it. It's going to be too hard. Exactly, bro. But the discipline and the strength within your body and your soul will tell you otherwise. Because yeah. otherwise, you will feel negative. You'll feel terrible about yourself. You will never feel accomplished. However, if you go with a high ground, you'll be like, I did it. Right, you'll have yeah. that inspiration to do it again, and that's the high. And it's almost like I almost kind of think of it as a drug, almost where it's like you'll never be satisfied until you keep going up, 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 up. Right? Mm -hmm. Not saying you should do drugs, but yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should just keep striving for more, no matter what. And you're yeah, increasing the the dosage, right? Yeah, yep, exactly. Yeah, I know. I like that. I feel like that's really cool. And. There was, oh, what was I thinking, bro? Oh, shoot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I think another thing is, like, kind of like how you talked about the past, like, the fear of the past. There's also, like, another thing that keeps us on that right track from, like, giving up and things like that. It's, it's, it's things like, well, there's, like, a technique in sales, right? Fear of loss, right? It's the fear of loss. That's why people buy the product. That's why people make the jump. That's why people make the commitment and sign the contract. It is the fear of of loss or the fear of missing out, right? FOMO, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, there's, there's a thought of the past, right? I, I'm, I'm not living up to what my ancestors did or they had to experience so much more. But here I am right now, I don't know what I'm gonna miss out on if I don't continue on this path. I don't know what I'm gonna miss out on if I don't push through regardless. Exactly. Like, for example, like my experience this, this past week, um, I was given an opportunity to make more money than I've ever made in my entire life. Um, to essentially, I'm, I'm not going to jump too much into it, but to help out a company. And uh, they had asked me, they had come and approached me. And initially I'm like, oh, this isn't something I typically do. Like, I don't want to necessarily do that. And regardless, I did it anyways, because I'm like, well, since I've come home from my mission, I've never turned down an opportunity. Mm. I've done it regardless, you know? And it was the same thing. But on the other hand, it was hard. It was very difficult. And no, at the end, I didn't, I realized I didn't necessarily want what I was going for or what they wanted me. They, I didn't want what they wanted from me. And I did learn a different lesson. You know, I went through the whole entire task of, I did everything that they told me to. And then I realized at the end, no, this isn't what I want. I need to be working for me. 
Like I've got dreams, I've got goals, I've got a vision. I have to prepare for my future, my family. Yeah, and then there's the fear of, of missing out where it's like, am I gonna miss out on this awesome opportunity? But then there's the opposite side. If I do take this opportunity, what's going to happen? What else am I gonna miss out on? Yeah. It's like there's always that, that split road. But then I think that's where this all kind of concludes. None of this is possible if you don't believe in God. Like, I don't think I would have ever figured out that, that, that cross in the road if I didn't seek out the Lord and His, and His guidance. I, didn't, I don't think I would have ever made, that, made up my mind. I don't think I would have ever decided because I would probably just kept pushing through. I needed to figure out then, and the only person who could offer me that, that inspiration was God. Um, 100%. And like, there's only one right decision. There's, there's a lot of really great things that you can do, but there's really like one way that you're going to be, you know, most happy in most situations. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's for every, that goes, applies to everything, but it's so important to seek out the Lord in everything that you do. When you start self-progression, when you're pushing through, when you're, when you're distracted, when you feel like quitting, when you feel like all of those things, whenever you go through all of those different phases, you should not forget the Lord your God who lifted you up out of the dust and offered you the opportunity to begin with. Um, and with that being said, like, we just invite you guys to, to continue. Stop sitting on your dreams. Um, actually, like, actively pursue them. It's like, is this, is this going to be the last day that you're like, oh, maybe tomorrow? Or, is this, or are you just going to continue on that same damning road, right? Damnation is, is the death of all progression. Mm. Like, we don't want to be damned. We don't want to fall out of the presence of the Lord. We need to make a change. And, and that's our invitation for you guys to, to start it up. Get on the path and take whatever we've talked about today, either from Joseph or from me or from both of us, right? And, and take those plans and goals and pursue your dreams. Um, they're not going to pursue themselves for you. And the longer you wait, the longer it's gonna to take to even experience the joy that comes from them. Like that's, that's the craziest part. Mm. Um, and I don't know, is there anything else you wanna say, finish up or? I think that summarizes perfectly, honestly. I mean, even in times where there could be a right, there could be a wrong. And then sometimes in most, in some, most sorry, in most <laughs> situations, yeah. there's always that blurred line, right? Where you're like, I don't know, right from wrong. And the Lord teaches us to judge righteously based on the teachings, 100%. right? God teaches us the right way, right? He set out a pathway, he's carved something out for us. And who are we to say, no, I'm not gonna do that, Exactly. right? It's, it's our purpose, we are built for more, we we're built for better, right? God wants to see us happy because that's what makes him happiest of all. If we can pursue everything, and if you one day you meet him in heaven, right? You're gonna he's gonna show you the list of all the things that you weren't, if you were accomplished, and if you're not accomplished. I think that also helps me out most as well. You know, David Goggins talk, talk, David Goggins talks about this as well, where he says, you know, he's 300 pounds, you know, fat, not doing anything, and he goes to heaven, and or on day of judgment, right, where God, you know, takes a look at his life and says, hey, look at this person, fit. 100 in, 187, 190 pounds, or however he was, however much, you know. Um, Navy SEAL, motivational talk, motivational speaker, uh, book writer, right? And he's gonna say, you know, who is this guy? And he, God's gonna sit there and say, that was supposed to be you, right? This is what you were supposed to be like. And so I think that also helps me out and say, man, you gotta take a look at your life completely and say, what could I do better? Yeah. God will always give us a path. And I think that's the first step is also praying about it, praying upon certain things. And it will always help you. God wants to see the most from us. Yeah. He always wants to see us happy. And in turn, that makes him happy because he is our father in heaven, right? Yeah. He wants the most for us, just like any father would, right? And so it helps anybody just to think about that. So, you know, we close this out by saying, you know, thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. And we invite you to do the same thing and just to pray upon it. We thank you guys for watching. Yep. All right. Well, this is Joseph and appreciate it. Good stuff. Yep. All good things. Let us know if you guys want to see more content like this. Pretty different, but we love you guys and we'll see you guys in the next video.